Hi everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? Did you guys have bad hell week, bad finals? Yeah. No, I don't care. Let's let's do comedy. Um, so I I just I like wanted to go up on stage with this like really like indignant like sort of standoffish like uh, like persona, but since I like solicited so many people to be there, I feel like I can't get away with that. Anymore. Like opening for Camille would have been fine, but anyways. Uh, so do you guys ever try to do stand up, but you get stood up? <laughs> so, like, I had so many, <laughs> I had so many, like, marijuana and weed-related jokes because this comedy event was, uh, like, supposed to happen on April 20th, but no, you all are going to miss out on that comedic brilliance, thanks to Kumail. Thanks, Kumail. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that immaturity. I have other immaturity to entertain you guys with. Um, so I've been thinking about something that's been blowing my mind, and you guys might think this is kind of juvenile, but just, just... Hear me out. So, guys, we've got our down below parts. We've got our wieners. When you, when you when you touch them, they get hard. When you touch them enough, it feels good, and eventually you splooge. It's a good time. Ladies, you've got your down below parts. You touch them, you know, it feels nice. You touch them enough, you get squishy. You touch them enough, and it's wet everywhere, and it's good time for everyone. Everyone's having fun. But now this is. What, what I was thinking about. These things that feel good when you touch feel even better when they touch each other. They make each other feel good. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand the implications behind that? Let me explain with a story. So uh, a few weeks ago, <laughs> over spring break, I went to a Bond's grocery store, you know, to buy some like gummy worms or something. Um, and I get to the cash register and the, and the lady behind the counter is like, oh, is this it? Like, yeah. And she's like, Oh, would you like to apply for a Vons club card? I'm like, yes, I would. I don't need a Vons club card. My dad has one. I'll use that one. But the longer me and this lady are talking, the more chances there are that we might have sex. I feel like you guys still don't get it, so I'm going to tell another story. Um, so a few weeks ago, I was redeeming my recyclables here in town. I don't know if you guys have done that, but so I take my cans, throw them on the counter. You know, the guy's counting and doing his Rain Man thing. And then he, uh looks up at me and goes, you got any more cans? And I go, yeah, I do, they're in my car. So we started walking back to my car. But I don't have any more cans. <laughs> that guy, on the other hand, had a mouth and a butthole that were just as good as a vagina. I returned the favor, don't worry, it was a good time all night. <laughs> See now, that's how you keep a joke from being heteronormative. I can take notes, write that down. But before you go thinking I'm like that progressive, I'm not, because I just like, I didn't mention any trans people in that joke. I'm, we're all bad people still. Um, <laughs> but so, so anyways, I don't know. Like sexual discrimination, kind of, like it boggles me because, like, okay, like, I get why homophobia exists. Like, I get it, but like, it still doesn't make sense because, like, social, cultural, political, whatever institutions aside, I feel like most people forget like the most basic like reasons for sex, which is pleasure or pain. And whatever you're into, that's that's my point. It's like whatever you are, whatever makes you feel good, like that's what should matter. And I've heard like both the religious assholes and the evolutionist assholes say like, no, sex is for reproduction. But when was the last time anyone in this room had sex to reproduce? You know, not once in my 13 year sexual history have I ever had sex to reproduce. Granted, those first nine years was just me, but that's besides the point. Child sexuality is a thing, look it up. Also, I'm pretty sure reproduction only ever happens by accident. Or at least, that's the way my parents made it seem. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, my grandmother was really racist. That in and of itself isn't that unique. Uh, but she was also um, a Mexican immigrant, which I think makes it kind of special. Uh, <laughs> so... So I, I used to like run errands with her and I used to take her to the bank. Um, and at her bank, there's only one person there uh, that spoke Spanish. And it was this um, light-skinned Latina named Julia. But my grandma never called Julia Julia. She always opted to call her Weta, which is like whitey ending in Spanish. Um, so, you know, I take her to the bank. She's like, hola, Weta, como estas? And I could tell Julia didn't like this. Like, you know, I could see it in her face. She's like, oh, okay, hey. hi, Carmen. Uh -huh. Um, so one day, before we go into the bank, I stop my grandma, pull her aside, I'm like, Hey, Grandma, I can't help but notice that you never called Julia by her name. You're always calling her Weta. Uh, maybe she doesn't like that. Maybe today you call her Julia. 
And she looks at me like, ah, guess that's just you. Like, what, are you, what are you talking about? Like, she doesn't mind. She knows that it's a term of endearment. Like, she knows I don't mean any harm by it. And I turn to my grandma and go, well, let me put it this way, grandma. If she were black, would you call her negra? And my grandma like, gets kind of offended. She's like, oh, no, no, Asia, of course I wouldn't do that. You know I wouldn't do that because black people don't like being black. See, now I've often wondered what that statement meant for my grandmother, who was like a dark-skinned, indigenous-looking Mexican woman. Like, it's kind of like a case of, you know, the pot calling the kettle brown. It would be like if I were to make the statement that all white guys with dreadlocks are douchebags. Yeah, I've only got one, but I'm still kind of shooting myself in the foot, you know? <laughs> um, but it's like, my grandma, she also, like, wasn't very educated. She only made it to the sixth grade, and that's not her fault. But like that lack of education like kind of perpetuated her racism in like really weird ways. Like uh, in our community, there was a big um, Filipino population, and she used to tell me like all the time like oh, you know Filipinos are actually just monkeys like from the Philippines they like live in the trees they're they're monkeys and I kind of laughed it off and like grandma let me let me correct you you're wrong they're not monkeys they're primates. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have taken air throw here I like that good job good job everyone. But no, um, no I, I, I love my grandma, like, for sure. She's like a sweet woman. She's just a sweet old racist who put me on the same pedestal as Jesus and JFK. Yay, machismo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used to have a really bad stuttering problem growing up, and I think it was like, I don't know, this weird nervous excitement. Like, I just, like, my mind and my mouth weren't on the same page. But as you can tell, I've gotten over it. Like, here I am today, talking to you all peachy. Clean. Anyways, um, but I still stutter uh, when I speak Spanish because I'm not as confident in my Spanish speaking abilities, which is fine. Um, but when it happens, I just like justify it by like not knowing the language very well. So like for example, I'd be like, perdón, pero no hablo español tan bueno, and I play it off well. Um, but interestingly, I also stutter a lot when I speak sign language. <laughs> but when that happens, I just play it off like I got Parkinson's. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have. <laughs> For Parkinson's. <laughs> but to let you guys know, to inform you, um, there are such things as speech impediments in sign language, in American sign language. Uh, my grandparents were deaf, not the Mexican ones, though. That's mutually exclusive. Um, but when, my grandparents were deaf, and they'd always give my Uncle Gary a hard time because he had like really short, stubby fingers, which I imagine is like the equivalent to like a thick lisp in sign language. <laughs> I feel bad for him. They're always ragging on him, always like giving him a hard time. Like, you know what I do? Understand you? You know? I'm glad no one laughed at that because that joke didn't deserve any laughs. It was cheap. We all would have been assholes if we did it. Well, I still am one. Um, but anyway, speaking of assholes. I'm terrified of middle schoolers, because all middle schoolers are assholes. Um, like, and, and it's just unavoidable. Like, I was an asshole in middle school. You were an asshole in middle school. Some of us still are assholes. <laughs> Anyways. But I mean, I think they're assholes, because middle school is like a weird place. It's, it's a strange mix of like factors that don't go together. Like, it's the, it's the mix of the biological facts of puberty and the social structure of the fucking Thunderdome. Like, think about it, you've got the younger kids coming like from <laughs> elementary school, wondering when recess is, like when they can play handball at Foursquare. But you also have like the older kids about to go into high school who are like finger fucking each other, like giving each other hands, or, like getting high on whatever they can. It's, it's, it's a strange, it's, it's, a, it's a weird situation. It's a real sticky situation. Um, but the, what I think is, it's, it's kind of like, if immediately after leaving Eden, Adam and Eve just like stumble into Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like a weird dichotomy of like innocence and debauchery. But having used that analogy, that got me thinking that the Old Testament was probably written by middle schoolers. <laughs> because that would explain why God was such an asshole. Like think about it. I'm like, Cain, you're such a fucking poser. Why do you try so hard with your stupid wheat to impress me? Come on, Abel. Let's go torture your sheep for a ritual sacrifice. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting really off track now. Um, middle schoolers, I hate them. They're the worst. But I mostly hate them 
because their psychological terror is like they know how to pinpoint weaknesses and just like strike hard and like they don't have to make any sense their arguments don't have to be valid they just have to like insult you enough like i remember in middle school i once ended this kid's career by telling him he had a low sperm count <laughs> like, we didn't even have sperm then probably i don't know we were still our sexual histories were still active um but so anyway so i have a story about like a middle schooler uh, a few weeks ago I got into this argument with my cousin, he's in middle school, about the Trail of Tears, because he didn't think it was real or mattered. I don't know. Like, um, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm trying to lay knowledge on this kid about you know, the, the oppression and genocide of Native Americans in this country. And at one point, he just like gets fed up. He's like, man, well, whatever, did you learn that in Idaho? <laughs> like, well, maybe I'd believe you if you went to a real school like USC or UCLA. He's got the Los Angeles bias. But at that point, I was already so frustrated with him, I was so like fed up and, that he just like totally got me off track and I just like lost all like train of thought. I was like, no, I don't go to school in Idaho, I go to fucking school in Iowa. And it's a great place and the Grinnell College is awesome. They're giving me a great education and I'm gonna go on to do great things. And then he just kinda leans back and looks at me and goes, Well, what are you doing next year? <laughs> so I found myself doubting the trail of tears these days. <laughs> it's not a good place to be. But at least I have a fucking sperm count. You know, better to accidentally reproduce with. Um, so as I was only going to open for Kumail, that's all I prepared. Um, I, I can maybe keep going. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, these are working jokes. Um, so one of my housemates recently uh, broke up with his girlfriend um, and I was doing chores the other day, and uh, I, I couldn't help but notice that, is someone calling people out here? What's going on? No, I wrote this joke much longer ago. Um, so my housemate wrote this girlfriend, but anyways, I, I, I was doing my chores, taking out the trash, and I couldn't help but notice his trash was like a lot different. The, uh, the ratio of used condoms and tissues were like just like way off. Like, <laughs> now there were no used condoms, and just like overflowing, like over the brim with, tissue paper. And I couldn't help but wonder whether or not those tissues were for tears or for knuckle babies. You know what I mean? I actually didn't wonder about that because I knew which one it was for because it was actually my trash can. I thought that joke would be funnier if I told it from like someone else's perspective, but now I've just made it like really awkward and weird. And I'm not sorry. I'm not. This is life. Okay, I think we can probably cap it off there. Um, oh, 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 no. Just be funny on the spot. It's so hard, you guys. It's so hard. It's so hard to stay hard under this pressure.